which we will be discussing uh, Russian Gulf relations economy, politics, and security, which I think is very important given the current situation. I just like to remind everybody that uh, Russia has more advanced relations with three countries in the region, and none of them is Arab. They are Turkey, Iran, and Israel. So maybe we have a lot to contribute to. I would like uh, our four panelists to speak from the, you know, not go to the podium. And uh, secondly, I'll be uh, rather dictatorial. I will not allow more than 12 minutes to each uh, panelist. Uh, and please respect that because this is the third session and it's the session before uh, lunch and we will start with uh, Ms. Uh, Elena who will be speaking about uh, the history of regional and international organizations in the region. شرقية في الأكاديمية الروسية للعلوم وكان موضوع أطروحاتها التطور الاجتماعي والسياسي للكويت بعد الاستقلال. Thank you very much. And uh, I would also like to thank the organizers of this conference for their kind uh, reception and excellent organization. In my presentation, I will allude to Russia's foreign policy towards the GCC countries. And uh, this is something other speakers have alluded to. So therefore, for the sake of not repeating what they said and to avoid any duplication, and of course, there will be other speakers after me. They will probably allude to the same issues. So I will try to confine my presentation to some uh, comparisons and um, uh, an assessment, if we can call it that, of Russia's foreign policy, and especially those points which have not been paid particular attention by my colleagues. First of all, I would like to give a general description of Russia's foreign policy in the area in the last 25 years. And uh, since the establishment of the Russian Federation after the demise of the Soviet Union, Russia has been following this uh, foreign policy for about 25 years. Uh, in short, and in a nutshell, I cannot call it a successful uh, policy, especially when we take into account uh, the contradictions between Arab countries and Russia. And it seems to me that uh, this uh, situation in the relations between Russia and the Arab world is due to uh, Russia not being able to determine specifically what goals it's trying to achieve. If we take a look at at the, at the documentation and the theoretical aspects of Russia's foreign policy, we will soon discover that this area is not really prioritized as of high 
importance in Russia's eyes. What Russia is trying to do is probably trying to contribute to achieving security in this part of the world, and Russia views this area from the angle of its interest in Central Asia and the Caucasus area with where uh, Russia tries to secure its security there. I would also like to further add that uh, some people accuse the United States as if the United States has stopped Russia from doing what it wants. I disagree with that. I think uh, a more uh, 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 weighty argument really will show that uh, there are defects in Russia's own policy. I will remind you of the agreement uh, struck by Kuwait and uh, Russia after the war on Kuwait. And uh, uh, Kuwait has uh, uh, concluded a treaty or an agreement with Russia after a short while it was frozen and this was Russia's fault not uh, America's or any other Western power so if we l take a look at the different phases of Russia's foreign policy in the area we will soon find that uh, An essential feature of Russia's uh, foreign policy in this part, and that is the inconsistent nature of uh, that policy. In the early 80s, Russia took some steps on the road to establish some sort of uh, cooperation with the Gulf countries, which was not uh, the, which uh, the Soviet Union had no relations with, except perhaps for Kuwait. And this is despite the fact that the Soviet Union was uh, taking a rather supportive attitude uh, for Iraq, but the same Kuwait, uh, in fact, initiated uh, this move and established the diplomatic relations with the Soviet Union in 1963. But uh, after uh, the collapse uh, and the dismantlement of uh, the Soviet Union, uh, Russia established uh, uh, relations uh, from square one with Arab countries. Maybe some may disagree with me, some of our colleagues here, but uh, we have become accustomed to say that Kozarev, as a foreign minister in the days of Yeltsin, practiced uh, the kind of policies which led to a failure in, of Russia's foreign policy in the Arab world. I disagree with that too because Russia has expressed uh, a keen interest in the Arabian Gulf countries in the 1990s. The Russian Prime Minister at the time visited uh, all Arab countries in 1994. The representative of the Russian foreign ministry said for the first time that Russia needs to establish relations with all Gulf countries in addition to the organization which combines these countries. By that I mean the GCC or the Gulf Cooperation Council. There is another point which uh, reflects a negative impact on Russia's relations with the Arabian Gulf countries, and that is the Chechnyan problem. This problem in Chechnya manifested itself sometimes in a manner which 
seems rather odd. There was an incident in Qatar when uh, Yandar Biev, who was one of the leaders of the Russian separatists, was assassinated. And this uh, has caused a lot of tension between Russia and the Gulf countries. And f uh, post 2000 was a more successful uh, era, which uh, marked a more intensive uh, way of uh, exchanging contacts between the two sides. Uh, and uh, Russia's relations with Saudi Arabia had improved, and Russia joined the Islamic Cooperation Conference uh, as an observer. Uh, so by and large, the Russia's foreign policy towards the uh, Arabian Gulf has seen both ups and downs. And this has been a feature of uh, which characterized this uh, relation. As for the current situation, this phase is really characterized by some difficulties. It's throat with difficulties, in fact. This is due to the Syrian crisis and the problems in Yemen. In my estimation, Russia and its relations with the Gulf countries really emanates from its uh, real practical capabilities and uh, is not uh, active in this area only as a result of its uh, desire to counteract the United States because there are problems, for example, the struggle against extremism and terrorism Russia can contribute to. Thank you very much. He worked as a lecturer in the French Sorbonne University of Abu Dhabi. He has a very significant book on English about decision-making process in the world global economy. He had um, <laughs> In uh, uh, Reserve University of Ohio, also a degree in international law from Essex in UK. Twelve minutes, please. Mm. <clears throat> The name of another most gracious, most merciful. <laughs> to begin with, I would like uh, to make sure I wouldn't go beyond the 12 minutes. I would like to extend all appreciation to the organizers and the uh, those in charge of the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies by uh, extending the horizons of people in, in this region by opening channels of communication among the Arab elite and think tanks and their counter, whether among themselves or with their counterparts in other countries like this conference. I would like to point, make, point out two issues. Uh, in this presentation, I have I, uh, has exceeded my profession I, as economist. But when I received the kind invitation to participate in this conference, <coughs> in order to address the economic aspect of the Arab-Russian relation, I honestly could regretfully say that there is nothing worth of examining. After insistence by Dr. Marwan, I elected a number of problematic areas which have an impact on the economic. Therefore, I, I hope I would be successful in my presentation, which goes beyond the scope of my profession. The other issue is that, that I'm among the late sessions of the second day of the conference. 
I would argue that most of the elements of this presentation have been raised, issued, uh, uh, raised, examined. And in this case, I will have to resort to plan B to present the same points with a different approach. And this approach could be either in the style or the way it is presented so that it wouldn't be a duplication of what has been already said. A third issue I would like to raise that I have a few reservations to raise. This is academic conference. There's a great deal of tension, and that's what I've noticed in the first day of the conference, as if it is a meeting of politicians. I don't know where the problem lies. However, I have been participating in many think tank per conferences where discussions, debate uh, was free from tension simply for the reason that elite think tanks transcend above political differences, which I haven't noticed here. Even many or some of the presentations given here, <coughs> according to me, were captivated by their own ideology. Others were also captivated by the political ideologies of their respective countries. These are two of the main remarks I would like to raise. What I have benefited by this conference is that that the problematic area of the Arab-Russian relations lie in two key issues, that each of us look at the other from a third party's perspective. We talk and don't listen. This was the key char characteristics of the political relations at the diplomatic levels between the Arab countries and the Russian counterparts. And this has been, again, reflected here. I have less than 10 minutes, and that's why I will skim through the presentations. The GCC and Russia, probl historical, uh, problematic areas of history, economy, and policy, politics. The ability of the presentation is in how many questions it raises rather than what it uh, what answers it gives. While I am an economist, and if we wish history is the absent present, and politics is present present, while economy is absent absent. In the preamble, in the introduction, uh, it's a repeated issues, they are repeated issues. The nature of the Russian Gulf relations are complicated. <coughs> As you may note, the Gulf Russian relations have been complicated. And I believe the main reason for this is history. History has a big role to play. If we take history aside, we believe that politics is taking this this relation to one direction while the economy is taken to another direction. Both the parties to the relations at least have failed to address and resolve these economy and political problems and communicate with the other party on this basis. The question by this presentation I am supposed to start with questions and end with conclusions, yet I will start with the questions and end with the same question and leave you the opportunity to dig deep. The recent developments, would the recent developments provide an opportunity for proximity and relations for more constructive cooperation? The issues of conflict 
has a number of features. Number one is the Soviet legacy and what I called the Afghanistan war syndrome. Russia does has not inherited only the military arsenal of Russia, but also its historical problems. There is a complexity against Islam and its Islamic active branch. This is attributed either to ideological reason for the radical secular adopted by Russia, which is not neutralizing religion, but hijacking, isolating, and targeting religion. Afghanistan war reinforced this idea among the Russians. The collapse of the Soviet uh, Union, we should all agree or disagree come to realize that Afghanistan war had a big role in this. That's why Russia had this legacy. The Russia is the lone state that is isolated as a result of geography and history. This issue of isolation prevented Russia from communicating with the Gulf states, also for supporting Iran and the former uh, Russian federal states were not Muslims, and that's why from the Gulf, there is the Gulf U.S. alliance, which benefited the Gulf countries as a political and military cover in many circumstances and on many occasions. This was at the expense of the margin for establishing other foreign relations. The Russian Gulf proximity would have been perceived by the United States as orbiting outside their scope. The third issue is the problems of politics and religion. This was clear for both the Gulf and the Russians as Russia targeted the peaceful uh, political Islamic movements or the armed ones. The same with the Gulf countries. Um, point of converge, converge, point of convergence or point of meeting speak about the opportunities. There are huge opportunities in economic and energy uh, domains. Uh, the, and as we have similar oil energies, it, the scope of limited are not huge. Uh, due to the uh, uh, leap in the oil energy and the uh, uh, fossil fuel, as I said, there is similarity between the oil and uh, energy. That's why there is no room for cooperation. The challenges uh, extension to the West, political, uh, uh, including the European Union, the NATO. Uh, the challenges facing the GCC is the uh, consequences of the Arab Spring the expansion of Iran and Islamic jihadists, and also uh, the decline of oil prices and the American-Iranian proximity rap rapprochement, which may reshape the relations between Russia and the GCC. Dr. Najid Turki, Majid Turki, is an academic member of Russian uh, Science Academy, more than 20 books at political media and his other books, overseen a number of translations. PhD uh, in politics from Moscow in 2004, PhD in media system
in the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful. To begin with, as a Gulf citizen, I'm very happy with this gathering, and we appreciate the role played by Qatar at the time of political fluctuation, security challenges. The presence of these conferences is a big vent for think tanks, elite thinkers, and uh, academics to gather and breathe. Thank you again to Qatar and the Arab Center for Researches, Research and Policy Studies. This is my first participation, yet it leaves an impression that this center is playing a positive, effective role, contributing to the cultural media uh, social awareness in addressing all our compelling issues. Dr. Jawad's restrictive leadership uh, forced me to delete some of my presentation papers. And since this is the last uh, session, I w will avoid wordiness and I'll be as terse as possible. The Saudi uh, Russian relation is the topic of my presentation and to be shared by uh, Mr. Uh, Kobian. That's why I will be very much reserved in delving in the details. The mutual relation has historic legacy and I believe this is one of the reasons of the fluctuality and uh, uh, deterioration between the two countries as we spent uh, since 1990 to 2015 25 years were not sufficient enough to forget about history and start from the present uh, two weeks ago in a seminar in Riyadh all who started uh, their presentation go back in history about the uh, presentation of King Faisal in 1962, the King of Sa King Saud with the ambassador in India, all these historical details made us busy from examining the current features of the relations. For me, this historic, uh, historical, uh, this historic legacy is nothing but a headache. Yet they are important for an understanding the current. The to me. The relations hasn't exceeded or went beyond the initial test of confidence. It is also suffering a number of negative impacts based on the stereotypes uh, perceived by one other, uh, party to the other uh, as each party is looking at the other from a third eyes. The third is that there are foreign and external factors. That's why Saudi-Russian relations are different. The course of this, these relations show that they were not good enough, nor they, did they live up to the aspirations. As a specialist, the reason is swinging between the two parties. So the question is, where is the core problem? <coughs> There is no doubt that Russia has good relations. We had some times where we had good relations with Saudi Arabia, but this fluctuated and did not live up to the regional stature of the kingdom or the degree of involvement in Russia by Russia in the region. The regional factor, no doubt, is important. The nuclear uh, issue of Iran, Houthis in Yemen, Syria, uh, sectarian division in the GCC. This is coming to crossroads with Russia's interest uh, relations with the GCC countries. Any speech about the Saudi-Russian relations will definitely revolve on the Gulf countries, GCC countries, with Russia. Similarly, we cannot separate them from the Gulf-US relations. As I said, the regional er arena is live with a huge 
amount of problems that pre prevents Russian Saudi r rapprochement. Russia is a true partner to Iran. That's the right. However, this partnership cannot be at the expense or or uh, of the Gulf countries. S Russia has turned a blind eye to the mess taking place in Iraq. Russia has turned a blind eye to many of the issues that are compelling and disturbing the harmony in the Arab and Gulf region. This no doubt has played a big role in the negative uh, nature of the region. This can, uh, about Russia's involvement, the same applies to the United States and UK in addressing many of the issues in the uh, Gulf and Arab region. If while the Russian scenario is different for many reasons. One, Russia has not extended its relations with Saudi Arabia and Gulf countries like what happened with UK and US beyond the planting confidence to the degree that some political circles seek uh, justifications for the uh, US meddling in our region. We cannot ignore the uh, American role in enabling the Houthis in Yemen or creating this ferocious image of Daesh, ISIL, to observe and capture the resources and weapons of Iraq to be a key player in the region and a threat to us. Yet no one is addressing this role by the United States leaving or placing the entire burden on the Russian, which made Russia unable to justify their the deterioration of their relations in the region. I would like to skip many slides and I'll come to the conclusion. Where the problem is, is do the Russia believe that their involvement is beyond the region or uh, this is related to the decision-making process in the leadership. There are a number of factors with the GCC, namely Saudi Arabia, the religious factor, which has a negative impact. The Saudi-American uh, relations had an impact on the Russians. The also uh, relations between Russia and Iran and other compelling issues uh, in Middle East, Iraq, Iran, Syria, Yemen. What's more important is the executive management in both the countries uh, do not live up to the political will of the leadership, whether the Russian uh, inclination towards uh, Saudi Arabia under Putin, and also the engagement and busyness by these countries of the regional issues at the expense of their direct and mutual interest has a negative impact. Mr. Gregory Kusaj, a professor of uh, contemporary Oriental studies in Moscow. He uh, is specialized in uh, foreign relations in the Middle East and uh, Eastern uh, Central Asia. He had PhD in Academy of Political Sciences in Russia in 1978. Uh, the thesis was political alliances in Syria. I, my colleague has uh, issued, uh, covered uh, a number of issues. I start from the point that the Saudi-Russian relations are strange, and it seems that the stances adopted by both sides are harmonious. 
uh, both Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Russia do not uh, wish to see issues in the uh, region resolved until the nuclear issue is resolved. They also wish to see a comprehensive dialogue in Yemen. More important, there is historical factors for the Saudi-Russian relations. The visit paid by the Crown Prince Abdelaziz to Moscow and the a visit of the current president to Riyadh. These relations built on these issues, which do not to be harmonious. It me seems that the general stand towards key issues in the Middle East, that this harmony is nothing but in form, not an essence. Here I would like to address certain issues, and openly speaking, frankly speaking, I believe that the visit paid by King Abdullah to Moscow at that time was needed by Moscow to put an end to external communication to what is called as Chechnyan separatists. Then the visit made by Putin to Riyadh was very significant and important to Russia. Uh, taking into consideration the circumstances at that time as the military campaign uh, north of Kafkaz ended and this visit was Im significant to Russia as ushering a new era of uh, foreign policy of Russia at that time. And this, the visit of February 11, 12, 2007, and that of Mr. Putin delivered his famous speech in Munich. And when he came the following day to Riyadh, said that Russia is looking at the huge geographical area of Saudi Arabia and the Gulf country as a field, as the uh, American hegemony must be brought to an end. This as comes from the perception that Russia is willing to remove the United States from the region, and which is a, an impossible matter. The recent chapter of the development of the Saudi-Russian relation, I mean, at the end of 2011, which is normally called the Arab Spring. And despite the two previous visits and for many other factors, the relations between the two countries has come to a freezing point, uh, if you will. However, this approach was attributed to one thing that Russia l considered that conditions in the region were attributed to the policies of the United States through its alliances, including the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. An article was published, uh, released by the foreign ministry stating, uh, the author said, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has taken the role of American supervisor of the region. The objective of the American policy is to remove the secular regimes and replace it with the Islamist regimes. And here, 
the United uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is working in cooperation with Qatar, and this with the main aim uh, to have the crisis in Syria resolved. Many examples to mention here. However, in July 2013, Prince uh, Bandar bin Sultan met with Putin, and this visit was interpreted as a failed visit. And in December, another visit was paid to Russia and some have evaluated this meeting as a notice warning sent to Russia. The Russian stance has come clear in the statement issued towards Saudi Arabia regarding the arrest of Nimr in the eastern province. This statement was met by a negative response by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, as a matter of fact, there were a number of problematic issues in the region. However, Russia recently Uh, has been dealing with the Syrian crisis uh, and has always insisted to adopt the same approach, siding with one party in this conflict, which is the regime. Russia has not commented on Iran's support to Bashar al-Assad or the activities and the support and assistance by Hezbollah to al-Assad. Also, it is said by Russia, uh, Russia believed that ISIL represents a threat to Russia. But during his visit to Cairo, Putin said that the <coughs> The international coalition is unlawful and illegitimate simply for the reason that it did not uh, 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 obtain the endorsement, full endorsement of the Security Council. I, I, he, I mean to say the coalition in Yemen. Also, the Russian foreign minister in Guatemala reiterated that it is a new, a recent attempt by Saudi Arabia to manipulate the region. I was here meaning the coalition in Yemen. To conclude, with respect to the Ukrainian crisis and Crimea, in this respect, uh, Russia uh, reconsiders its position towards Saudi Arabia. Putin has repeated recently that following the sanctions imposed on Russia as a result of seizure of Crimea, he stated that Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is behind the attempt to provocate or instigate financial crisis by deliberately bringing oil prices down. It is also stated that our f friendly uh, leaders in Saudi Arabia did not do what they have to do despite the fact that he believed that they were able to. Today, I do not think there are precursors that may suggest that Saudi-Russian relations would improve in future and in the near future. Thank you very much. Now we open the floor for your interventions. But I remind you, in a minute and a half, you can s utter uh, 300 words. So please, no more than a minute and a half for each intervention.
My question is to Mr. Majid at Turkey. Is there any uh, attempt by Saudi Arabia to strengthen its ties with Russia despite the events in Syria and Yemen in response to Iranian-American reconciliation? Anyone wants to pose a question? But please be brief and without uh, any passionate statements. In the name of God, uh, I thank the organizers and thank you for all this uh, discussion. But uh, what are we aiming to achieve as a result? What will the outcome be? I personally propose that we should send an appeal to the to, to Russian government to stop exporting uh, uh, military equipment to despotic regimes. Why can't they uh, export tractors and machinery? And also stop immigration to Israel because they, they increase the population of Israel from 3 million or 4 million to 7 million. And Russia should coordinate better with OPEC. My question is to Dr. Majid and Dr. Nasr. Uh, are we really uh, sure that the Gulf countries want to strengthen their ties with Russia, or are we just discussing this as a mere academic discussion? The Gulf countries have been bedfellows with Americans for a long time. And also, when it comes to any possible agreement with Iran, what what all all uh, the Russians seen cooperation seems to be directed towards despotic regimes. Please, please do not uh, belittle academic discussion. No, no, I'm just uh, mentioning it as a fact. Okay, we will give each panelist two minutes to respond to any questions or has any final remarks. We'll start with ladies first, of course. Okay. Uh, and the, the, this is not an easy question because now we're witnessing uh, difficulties in predicting the future. I don't think the Gulf countries now will find any support by Russia for their position. The steps taken by the United States and the European Union aimed at enhancing the security of the region. I don't think these steps give Russia any opportunity to play the same role that these countries are playing, especially in view of the fact that it's in the interest of these countries to secure their uh, energy supplies from this region, and they see it in their interest that uh, the flow of uh, oil and gas should continue to Europe. As for Russia's capabilities in this regard, they are much less in comparison to the Western countries who have been allies with the Gulf countries for a long time, I don't think Russia can change that situation, at least in the foreseeable future. Uh, in, 
uh, in response to the question that uh, does the do the Gulf countries really intend to uh, enhance their relations? Yes, because you cannot ignore Russia, and although relations with Russia has been uh, witnessing an ups and downs, and similarly the GCC countries cannot be ignored as a world power. So, and uh, for the time being, I cannot see any any opportunity in the economic side because uh, the Gulf countries have a rentier kind of economy, rely which relies solely on uh, oil and gas and uh, at the same time there is the historical baggage of the Soviet Union legacy and also America's alliance with this area. There are other things which I did not have time to allude to. Russia as I mentioned has this uh, cause for concern, feeling that's a lone state or a lonely state. And uh, s similarly to Turkey and Iran, because they feel that they're isolated either on uh, ethnic, religious, or cultural grounds. Turkey experienced this with the European Union. Iran experienced this with the Arab world. Russia experienced that with the rest of the world. And the vital field of interest is important. The other problem is uh, Russia thinks of itself as a superpower, but its capabilities do not go beyond a regional power. And this is a problem they should solve. The other point is the uh, one of the reasons behind the demise of the Soviet Union and the collapse of the Soviet Union is its inability to integrate with the world economy. Russia, after 15 years attempt, still failing to do that. They are only managing to cooperate in the field of energy. And so therefore the, the collapse in oil prices and the sanctions have impacted Russia heavily. And also, uh, uh, Russia needs to unify its uh, vision, and th there are problems between the Europeans themselves and the Russians. And also, on the part of the Gulf countries, they do not have a unified vision and uh, unified goals, and also uh, there is no stability in the political decision-making process because of the alliance with the America. Now that America is taking a different route more towards Iran, maybe this will help liberate the GCC's foreign policy more. Uh, there is a need by the uh, Saud al Faisal spoke, have spoken on, on many occasions that we are in a dire need of a strong uh, Russia with a presence in the Middle East issues to uh, uh, achieve balance uh, in the multi polar system. Let's uh, acknowledge that the world is about to face huge economical challenges in addition to the conspiracy theory about the number of the population in the world. This Russia represents 2% of the world population, uh, while Russia has 10% of the Arab sweet, uh, the world's sw sweet water, uh, more and many reserves of the uh, natural resources, which means that in the far future we are, will be in need of uh, Russia. <coughs> I, we believe that Russia is one of uh, the m m main uh, uh, countries that will be needed to. And I would like to conclude that there are promising 
horizons for the development of mutual relations and ties with Russia, whether with respect to Saudi Arabia or the entire Gulf bloc, which will have uh, benefits on the Arabs and the Gulf. We are uh, key partners in the global energy market. We also uh, in a need of the military and industries rather than uh, importation of weapons. I have examined thoroughly and the strategic relations should go beyond uh, uh, above the uh, na respective national interest. The negativity of the mutual Saudi-Russian relations has an impact on the entire bloc, GCC bloc. And the po more positive the relations are will have positive uh, uh, impact on many uh, issues like that of Syria and Yemen. Similarly, it will have a positive impact on Russia's domestic affairs, like in Caucasus and Chechnya and other areas. I agree with Dr. Majid, but I'd like to add a few words. <coughs> a few years ago, uh, the diplomacy of Saudi Arabia uh, released an article uh, which was titled by the uh, editorial that the two countries are not aware of what each is seeking from the other. Before at the, we should identify what do we need from each other. I agree with what Mr. Nasser said, that had Russia been truly willing to develop its relations with Gulf countries, and namely Saudi Arabia, then Russia should rid itself of the stereotypes or previously conceived conception as looking at itself as a superpower. In their approach towards the Gulf countries, Russia must understand it is only one of the world countries, and they should develop their relations with any other countries they have mutual interest with. I believe that the panelists have covered the topics thoroughly within the time limit. The gist of the session is, first, we admit to the presence of key problematic areas uh, standing as hurdles on the way of cooperation between Gulf Cooperation con uh, Council countries and Russia. The other issue is that it seems that politics takes precedency of our economy. It means that Politics is the key issue, and there are differences in the approaches taken by the leaderships of these countries towards particular issues. And the third issue is the real politic uh, is absent from the scene. What is expected to take place in the region in the foreseeable future? Is it expected for this conflict in Syria to continue as it is? Is it expected for the situation in Yemen to remain as is? If we look at these issues from a realistic perspective, I believe each party will find common grounds to enhance cooperation. Uh, finally, in the previous session, we have we heard from Ms. Galia or Mrs. Galia about the potentials of cooperations, and I believe there are untouched areas. I have been uh, to in a visit to Tataristan in an economic conference there. I found out that the potentials she spoke of are really present. However, the economic, uh, the economical ones on the short and medium term, we believe that if Russia starts to understand 
the stand of Saudi Arabia towards the bringing oil prices down and the rejection to bring the production capacity down means there is a disagreement with Russia. In other words, if Saudi Arabia is not in agreement with Russia and the GCC countries, the direct impact will fall on the shoulders of Saudi Arabia. And if this decline is not responded to by Russia, it will be reflected in further losses to the Saudi Arabia. We have to be realistic. There must be an agreement between OPEC and Russia. As a result, the total capacity, production capacity in the global market, then even if certain countries like UK or Norway sought to benefit by this, they will find a very slim scope. Therefore, I believe these issues must be examined from a realistic perspective and real politic must be present. Once again, I extend all appreciation to all the panelists and I conclude now to lunch. Off you go.